Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and no, I'm not going on a safari, as you can see. But if I was, I'd be damn ready. Now, this is why you need to be ready. You know, we've got winter times rolling in up north, okay? And all the way down, you know, typically here in Florida, it's our dry season, but any place north of Florida, you know, you can still get all the nasty weather. So, you can get rain, snow, sleet, freezing rain, blizzards, whatever it may be, you can get it all, all right? But if you have some way to keep yourself warm and dry and you have an emergency pack with you at all times in your vehicle, especially if you are traveling, um, you have a very good chance of survival. And when it comes to survival, it doesn't matter what you look like. So let's get going on this video. So I'm gonna take this hat off first because it's a little worn. baseball cap would be good a knit cap would be good all right but if you're stuck out in the elements you want something that's waterproof okay and the, the, the sides will flop down on this bad boy here okay and then they just snap right back up into place and it does have the the sunshade in the back but it also does keep all the elements and everything off the back of your so it doesn't go down your jacket your coat anything that you're wearing okay so this would be a very good bonus to have. I have one of these I carry with all my packs. All right, next thing. First thing around the bag, right up top, rain gear. Now you'll make sure you have a good rain gear in your uh, emergency pack that you're gonna be taking with you. For the simple fact is, it's, it's, the weather's nasty, and say you, you, you're probably dressed pretty warm if it's uh, cold out and snowing or whatever the case may be, but if you can throw this stuff on over the top of what you're already wearing, that will be a bonus and that will keep you warm and dry. And that is the whole key. Hypothermia is not something you want to get involved with and that can set in very quickly. All right, the next thing, all right, a tarp. Now this, you can, you can get whatever size you want. This is a, a small little tarp, all right? This is something you could just make some shelter with, you know? You don't know what kind of situation you're going to be in. You don't know if you're traveling through the mountain ranges or something and say your car slid off the road, for God's sakes, and you ended up down in a ravine, but you were okay. But now nobody knows you're down there. Say you don't have a cell service. And what do you do? Well, at least you have some way that you can pitch a shelter to try to get out of the elements. Because like I said, hypothermia is not a good thing. And it doesn't matter if it's snowing or raining or anything else. If the temperatures drop, you're going to run into trouble. Next is sleeping bag. Make sure you have a sleeping bag. You can get them they're real compact like this. You know, having some way to keep warm if you have to lay down on the ground or something like that is another great bonus. All right. <clears throat> now you want some way to cook. All right. Now in here. I keep one of these little stoves like this, all right? But more likely, if you can just get a fire going and you have a Stanley cup like this, all right? <clears throat> these things are great. Um, you can take and uh, you can cook in these, you can put water in these, you can sterilize, uh, whatever you need to do. And uh, these Stanley cups are worth their weight in gold. And they... Uh, they come with a couple little cups inside, so if you did want a little cup, and you have a nice little stainless steel way of cooking, sterilizing water, and the whole nine yards. So that's some way to cook. So you got to have a cook system, all right? Now, in the bottom of down here, I'm not going to pull them out. I have a change of clothes, so this way, if my clothes do get wet, I can take and change into my regular dry clothes. And maybe if you have a fire going, you can dry out the clothes that you just took off. You want to make sure that you have cordage, some way that you can help string up. You're going to see in here, I've got lots of cordage, okay? <clears throat> some type of maybe a little lantern, all right? All right? You may have, I have flashlights and stuff in here, but if you have a lantern, because this would be great, you can hang it on a tree branch, you can do whatever you want with it, and it's very bright at nighttime, very, very bright and it doesn't take up a lot of room in your pack. This whole pack fully loaded weighs about 23 and a half pounds. 
which isn't bad. Now I do keep in here some freeze dried foods. Mountain House, okay? I have a breakfast, biscuits and gravy, and I have a dinner, bistro. Now, the good thing about having that is, boom, all you need is hot water. So you take your Stanley, pull up some water, and you have a meal. Something hot to put in your body. Hypothermia is what not what you want to deal with. If you're getting where I'm going with this, all right? Two bottles of water I carry in here. Now, the only thing you have to be concerned about with carrying water in the wintertime um, is if in your car it's going to get extremely cold, uh, these could freeze on you, all right? Um, but maybe it's a chance you have to take because this way here you do have water to help get you through. Now, yes, you can melt snow, but it takes a lot of snow uh, to equal out to the ratio of, like, you know, a 16-ounce bottle of water. You're going to be melting a lot of snow, believe it or not. All right, anything else down in there? Nope. Then, I have one of these. It's called a Bible Shack. All right? Now, you can take, I carry a tarp because... My theory is you take this and put this down on the ground, try to clear the snow or something away out from underneath your tarp and see if maybe you can find like a pine tree or something like that to where you could make a bed out of. All right, you're more likely you're not gonna find any leaves or anything unless you find them underneath a big, huge tree, pine needles. Um, but if they're buried in snow, you're not gonna find them. But if you can get branches off of a pine tree of any kind, balsam, whatever, and this way here, you know, you could lay this down on the ground and put those down on top of it and then put your sleeping bag down and it gives you a barrier between the frozen ground and, you know, help keep you warm, staying away from the hypothermia thing, all right? All right, that is everything out of that main pouch. Now we come into the secondary pouch. Now this is a 60 liter pack. All right, with the uh, the attachments that are all on it. Now all these attachments do come off. All right, and uh, they all det detach, so you could just you know if you just wanted just this one little pack, you could do that. But I have everything attached to it. Now what the great thing is is you can take these and take them off this one, and I can put them on another backpack, and I don't have to exchange anything out. So it's kind of nice if I'm if I'm depending on what I'm going to do or where I'm going to go, I can switch out these and put them on different packs. Right on the top, my portable little first aid kit and my waterproof pouch. Now this uh, backpack is waterproof. Um, I just keep these in here so I have a first aid kit, all right? I also have two cans. I have chili with beans and some beefaroni. They both have the pull tops, but in, in just in case maybe you didn't, you wanna make sure that you do get yourself uh, the army issue the old style can openers. You can get those right on Amazon. Um, they're they're really cheap. You know, you can get a, a pack of them for ten bucks or something. You know, but you, that's something you want to make sure that you have. Now, <clears throat> I have a bank line. This stuff is great. If I mean, I don't leave home without this stuff. Always make sure you have bank line because um, that stuff is so strong. It'll hold anything. I also carry. A knife. This here is it's a it's a monster. All right. Now maybe you guys might have seen these on TV, and you also probably run across them on Amazon, maybe. And inside this thing is a huge, huge towel. All right. And this way here you can help dry yourself off and anything else if you did get wet and all that. And then you can wring this thing out and it dries in no time. All right, that's a great addition to have. Also in the very bottom of this pouch here, I do have, I have a toothbrush, all right? I have this little pouch on the top, I'm not gonna pull everything out, um, but there's a toothbrush, there's uh, Q-tips, there's some wipes, there's soap, um, a little bit of everything. Just wait here, you don't know what's gonna happen, and you know, maybe have this little bit of hygiene um, fat wood. I carry 
three sticks of fat wood in the very bottom of that bag right there, all right? Because this is really great to get a fire going. And you can buy this stuff if you don't, like down here in Florida, pine trees are very scarce, so it's very hard to find um, fat wood, all right? <clears throat> but you can go online and you can order these and they come into like a box, uh, I think it's like a 10 pound box, five pound box, somewhere in that area, you know, and you can order this stuff. You can smell, it smells really good and this stuff lights up really fast. Now the whole key to having an emergency pack and everything now, but the key to have an emergency pack is so that you can survive in an emergency situation. Say you're traveling or, you know, maybe you travel a lot with your job and you go from state to state or whatever else. And if you have a pack with you, your chances of survival in, in a uh, emergency situation are very, very high. Um, this way here, you have some place to stay. You can make yourself a shelter, you can stay warm, you can stay dry, you have food to eat, you have some water to drink. Like I said, you could melt snow and stuff. It's just gonna take a lot of it to equal out to water. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be doing that quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> on these side pouches, uh, this one here is basically just fire starter. I have my uh, cotton balls that are soaked in Vaseline, which they, one spark, boom, you know. I have a box of matches. I have some more fire, fire starting stuff, Bic lighter, you know, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> now, on this side is a map of my area, okay? I also have a write in the rain notepad that I've talked about in several of my videos, okay? You can uh, write in here, you can leave a note, say, say you crashed your car, you went down the ravine, like I said, all right? You can write a note on this and you could leave it on the outside of the car, it wouldn't matter because once you write on it, it doesn't matter if it gets wet, it doesn't run. You know, it's a perfect thing. If you had to leave somebody a note or something, hey, I'm hidden in this direction, I'm trying to make it to here, you know, somebody finds your car, whatever the case may be, all right? Flashlight, more cotton swabs, you know, just on the chance, fire steel, multi-tool, you know, all that kind of stuff. All right, it, it's just, it's kind of like, you've got a little bit of everything in this pack. And it's a perfect thing, you know? Now, I do carry these stakes. Now, you don't have to carry stakes with you. You can make your own out in the woods and take and just, you know, use those. If you were gonna set up your tarp system and everything else, you can make your own stakes with wood, all right, with sticks. But I carry these, they weigh hardly anything. They fit perfectly right here and strap right on. And then I always have some stakes for my sleep system, my shelter. <clears throat> now, in this pouch here, I'm not gonna pull all this stuff out. I'm just gonna tell you, there's just a ton of cordage. I have some way to sharpen my knife, um, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> you know, you just never know how much cordage you may need. So I do carry extra with me. Everything in a nutshell. Now, one thing that you could add to this if you don't wanna carry a lot of this kind of stuff is you wanna make sure that you, you know, one thing you wanna make sure you have is a blanket of some kind, a sleeping bag or something like that in your emergency backpack. So you say you wanna get a small pack, all right? You don't have to have a big pack like this. You don't have to have that. You can have a small pack, all right? But you wanna make sure that you have um, either a blanket, a sleeping bag, something of that nature. You could get away with just doing a survival shelter because this will build you a shelter. You will need a still need some type of a cook system, although you could eat this right out of the can. But if it's ice cold, it's probably not gonna be that good. So you may make sure you have a, sleep, a, a cooking system so you wanna get maybe one of these little Stanley pots. They're very inexpensive. You can get them at Walmart. You know, <clears throat> they sell them right in the camping section. Make sure you have a knife, you know, a good sturdy knife, you know, that you can try to do, do some stuff with and, you know, just to having a good sturdy knife. And the most important thing you want to make sure that you have is a first aid kit. 
So you could really willow this down. Um, you do want to make sure that you have a change of dry clothes. I would also suggest making sure that you have rain gear and a hat, um, whatever kind of hat that you would like, to make sure that you stay warm and dry. I would um, also suggest in your pack that you would have either waterproof matches, um, a Bic lighter, something of that long of that lines, because this way here you have some way to start a fire if you needed to. All right, hopefully you wouldn't need this kind of stuff and maybe you know somebody can find you and, and everything else but you never know if it's a real bad storm a blizzard or whatever else there's probably not going to be a lot of people out on the road and if you were just lucky enough to get stuck in it and you're sitting on the side of the road well eventually you know either you're going to have to make a decision you're going to have to leave or you know you're going to sit there and wait it out and also remember you know if you're in a blizzard you can run your car but you have to make sure the windows are cracked and you have to make sure that you get out and clean out where your tailpipe is every time you're going to start that car because the carbon monoxide will build up inside the car without you even knowing it because it is the smellless gas and it'll kill you so if you are stranded and you're going to start your car you have to be able to get out clear off to where the tailpipe is and make sure that you leave your window cracked a little bit to run your car to try to get some heat to try to stay warm in the event maybe you didn't have some of this stuff but if you have some of this stuff you have ways of survival now if say if you were stuck maybe you had to get out of the car and start a fire you know what I'm saying to cook up your water to eat your dehydrated food. Now, if you could warm up your bottled water warm enough, you can just pour the bottled water into here. It won't be hot, but it's something to eat. You won't starve to death. As long as these don't freeze, like I said before, you know, it's a gamble you're taking, it just depends on where you live and your conditions. So this has been your emergency backpack, your to-go ba bag that you want to take with you, especially if you're traveling, uh, maybe with your job, or you know, you're know you going from point A to point B. Maybe it's something you just always want to have in your vehicle. You know, a lot of people maybe they don't want to carry it with them all the time. You know, I could understand that to a certain point, but if you're going to be doing a lot of traveling or something like that, especially if you travel with your job or in that situation, like I've been saying, having an emergency pack with you in your trunk, you know, nobody can see it. And this way here, if something happens, you can survive. And don't worry about what you look like, you know, pick you out a nice funky hat. Hey, as long as you stay warm and dry, that's the key to the whole situation. Make yourself a shelter, whatever else, because you just never know what could happen. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Everybody out there, stay safe, stay prepping, get yourself your backpack, get your bag ready, put it in your vehicle, and be ready for whatever may come your way. Till next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.